take this for emergencies. Dad, you need that. To take it. Uh, put it in your sock. Take these. I got hankies, Mom. You say that now, and you never have enough when you need them. Oh, now, don't cry. Who says I'm crying? <laughs> You, you listen to me, young man. You are going over there with our blessing. You have some problem, you wire us. I won't need any. You have second thoughts, you come back and have those thoughts here. We don't need you sitting around some strange country keeping us worried. I'll be fine. You do as your mother says, or she'll swim over there and get you. You damn right I will. <laughs> I'll let you know if there's a problem. First time I ever heard you use that word. There's a first time for everything, isn't there? <laughs> Just about to ask you the same question. Thought I might do some fishing like we used to. Well, I don't think there are any fish left. The Sloan plant had to discharge during the war upstream. Well, that figures. I should be back someday. The eternal optimist. I wish everything could be the way it was before the war, but I, I don't think it ever works that way. I'm not just an optimist, but a philosopher, too. You have to admit, e even if there hadn't been a war, things would have changed. Though I know. You were just a skinny runt when I went overseas. Coming back. Well, I know a lot of the vets never talk about the war, but I know that doesn't mean they don't think about it. I guess that's perfectly understandable after everything you went through overseas. You expected life to be hunky-dory once you got back home, and it wasn't. In a lot of ways, it's pretty damn lousy. But I don't see what good more people dying is going to do. I, I still miss Dad. I always will. I miss Sarah, maybe not as much as you do. You're tired of everything going wrong? Well, I'm tired of missing people. I don't want to have to miss you, too. Do you remember why we came up here when you first got back? Sarah was having second thoughts, and nothing else was the way you planned it or remember it. And the final straw was when you found out Rupert shut down. You couldn't even get a chicken fried steak. You remember? Hank, you remember that? I heard Rupert's just reopened. Rupert, you can get all the chicken fried steak you want, I guess. Rupert's reopened. Did something, I guess, huh? Rupert's reopened.
behind him. He was up at Curly. Is he coming? How could you doubt it? <laughs> Al, wilt thou take Anne, here present, for thy lawful wife, according to the right of our Holy Mother, the Church? I will. Wilt thou take Al, here present, for thy lawful husband, according to the right of our Holy Mother, the Church? I will. I'm no small-time jerk. I have to be the biggest jerk in the state. Sounds like you still love her. Sounds like you got bad hearing. It's a bartender's job to say you'll get over her. Oh, yeah? But this customer wants to know when. When you meet somebody who will take your mind off your troubles. Excuse me, Abe. I heard this place was opening up again. It is, Gloria. <laughs> Hello, Hank. You both work here? I imagine we'll be working our fingers to the bone. We own the place. Oh, well. We'll be open in a few weeks. Just on the weekends at first. Oh, well, that's fine by me. I've been waiting almost four years to have a chicken fried steak here. I guess I can wait a little while longer. No, uh, we don't have chicken fried steak on the menu. The Rupert's always had it. We can't afford to have beef on the menu yet. <laughs> <sighs> no chicken fried steak. My wife makes a great peach cobbler. I just made some, testing out the oven. Come on in, try it, please. Oh, no, I don't want to be a bother. No, it would be no bother. Come on in. <laughs> It'll be on the house. <laughs> you have to let me pay. I couldn't. Yes, you could. This is a business. It would be my privilege to be your first paying customer. <laughs> After all we've been through this year, we deserve a vacation. I couldn't agree more, which is why I bought... Tickets to Havana? But it's out of season now. A little rum and coca cola, and who will notice? Well, I will notice. The heat and the humidity and the doldrums and all the best floor shows shut down. But thank you, Michael. It was a sweet gesture. I had the same impulse. I booked passage. To Europe. La Belle France, destination Paris. I hate the way the frogs treat you when you don't speak their language. You think they're different now. We say their country. Things will be different in France when hell freezes over. Michael, they're desperate for American dollars. We'll eat in the finest restaurants for song. We'll eat snails and brains and rabbits, for heaven's sakes, and be treated rudely for the privilege of overpaying. No, thank you. <sighs> Let's just stay home. No one said stay home. We've simply ruled out Havana and Paris. I suggest the Grand Canyon. Is there a single good restaurant there? Oh, Ruth. Well, it's supposed to be a vacation for both of us, and my idea of a vacation is not watching you descend, possibly to your death, seated on a burrow, and then waiting for you to return without even the consolation of a good restaurant. Let's take a cruise. Caribbean? All right. Fine. If you can tell me where we can find a civilian passenger ship. Or if you can explain to me what is the point of being cooped up in a closet of a bedroom and sailing around in a circle for weeks on end and being forced to eat whatever they happen to have on board and being forced to go where they want to go. How about Cedar Point? Oh, honestly. I'm serious, Ruth. We could rent the same room we had before our wedding and... Uh... Please. I go to Cedar Point for picnics, not vacations. New York? No. no. 